I, I am Dr. Fred Southwick, and I have been working in quality and safety improvement since 2007. And one of the problems that I have noticed over and over again is that we create the ideal way to perform a process. And when we coach individual physicians, nurse and nurses and medical students to perform those procedures, they decide that they want to do it their way. And if you do it your way rather than the way it was designed, you will not achieve the outcome that you had hoped. And therefore the experimental improvement process will fail. So we came up with a bedside mnemonic was called TEMP. And this was to relate all of the key nursing and patient treatment plans at the bedside. T was for tubes, lines, and catheters. Are they needed? Should they be changed? E is for eating and exercise. What is the patient's exercise? Uh, do they need PT? What are their dietary needs? And also excretion, are they having, are they constipated? They need a, to have a bowel movement. And how does the patient sleep? And M is for monitoring, how frequently should vital signs be obtained? Uh, does the patient need telemetry? Does the patient require daily blood, blood drawing? And finally, P is for pain. Uh, is the patient's uh, pain under control and plan? Does the patient know the plan for the day? This simple mnemonic we are able to cover all of the key elements that the patient and the bedside nurse need to know about. And we realized very quickly that when we presented it to our, the nurses and our physicians, that they nodded their heads and said, yes, I will perform it. But when we observed them, they did not. We recruited Nicole Gravina, who is a behavioral psychologist who has worked in industries to address individuals that resisted change, how to bring about that change. So Nicole, what were your recommendations of how we could actually implement effectively the TEMP bedside rounding system? Well, the first thing that we did was we wanted to collect some baseline data. So we wanted to understand where we were currently so we could know how much improvement we needed to create. And then the second thing that we did was we did an uh, assessment interview. And in that interview, we wanted to understand the barriers to completing that process. And so we recruited uh, the physicians who were part of the process, nurse managers, and also charge nurses. And we asked them some questions related to what the barriers might be in the process. And what we learned was that first, some people didn't have clear information about what the expectations were. And so we realized we we needed to clarify what the process was and what some of the expectations were, which we did through an email and also conversations with the providers. We also uh, learned that people uh, didn't know whether or not they were actually performing this in the way that they were supposed to. And so we figured out that we needed to add some feedback into the system. And we did that through some individual um, conversations right after the rounds. And we also did that by emailing graphs of performance that we had collected over time. And then finally, we learned that people needed to talk to each other about this process. And so we added in a 15 minute huddle on Fridays, which both Dr. Southwick and Dr. Radhakrishnan were a part of. And in the huddles, the nurses and physicians were able to talk to each other about how it was going. They could share, there were natural opportunities to provide each other feedback. We learned in the huddles that physicians were getting less nurse calls when the nurses were with them in the process and so on. And um, so each of these kind of small elements came together to help help support uh, the behavior change over time. And we spent quite a bit of time, there were a few months that we spent supporting this change um, across time and we were able to see some positive results. Nicole, let me share the results. First, the baseline. Notice unit one, 38.5%, one individual failed to follow the protocol at all. In unit two, the mean adherence was 32.8%. And notice that four individuals failed to follow the protocol. After intervention one, 
Unit one increased to 63.5% adherence and unit two to 59.2%. After the second intervention, the unit one increased to 69.5% and unit two to 76.8%. So Dr. Radhakrishnan, what, what did you see happen? Well, what I really liked about the program that Dr. Gravina and you and others helped implement is it was about support. It was about how can we support the adherence to the checklist, the behavior we want. When that was achieved, we saw that there was tremendous teamwork with the nurses, the physicians, the patients were involved. And the beauty of all of this meant that there was better communication. So it goes back to the George Bernard Shaw saying, the trouble with communication is the illusion that it's happened. In this setting, we realized it did happen and there was adherence. And we're actually looking into some data points now. And I will tell you that the preliminary data shows that there is improvement in patient satisfaction and other metrics. 